Hopscotch, novel. It tells the story of Horacio Oliveira, its protagonist, and his relationship with La Mega. The story puts the subjectivity of the reader at stake and has multiple endings. This work is usually called an anti-novel, although Cortezer himself preferred to call it a counter-novel. It meant a leap into the void that distanced him from the controlled security of the fantastic tales of his early days as a writer to enter a search without findings through unanswered questions. Although the style that is maintained throughout the novel is very varied, according to Cortezer himself, the work, in some way, is the experience of a lifetime and the attempt to translate it into writing. Argument Recounting the plot of Hopscotch in a linear way is, surely, a reductionism that distances the reader from the meaning of the work, since it excludes the vast psychological universe of the characters and their complex relationships with themes such as love, death, jealousy and art, among others. Taking this into consideration, a summary of the plot of the work is presented below, which is divided into three parts. The story takes place in Paris, France, where Horacio Oliveira, the protagonist, wanders through the bridges of the city in search of her lover, Uruguayan woman named Lucia, better known throughout the novel as La Mega. Their relationship is passionate but asymmetrical. La Mega, with a passionate temperament, is in love with Horacio, who is more analytical and cold, while he does not seem to want to get emotionally involved with her. Oliveira enjoys La Mega's company, but he is a man of privileged education who loves intellectual discussions, while La Mega, less educated than he, can hardly participate in them. Both meet frequently with some mutual friends, members of a group nicknamed the Snake Club, a circle of artists, writers and musicians who spend their time drinking and listening to music while discussing art, literature, philosophy, architecture and other topics. In the discussions, they usually talk about a writer with the last name Morelli, who insists on the need to break with the linguistic forms of the moment, which he feels worn out by their abuse. The group jumps from one topic to another with relative ease, but La Mega, who hasn't read that much, usually needs to have the concepts discussed explained to her. Her vivacious manner alienates her from the group and is the harbinger of her eventual estrangement from it. The club, however, shows affection for Lucia, but almost always in a condescending way. Horacio and La Mega have been living together for some time, but Rocamador, La Mega's baby cared for by a nanny in the countryside, gets sick and she has to bring him to live with them. The infant's health is too delicate to improve in that cold and overcrowded apartment, but Lucia is terrified by the idea of sending him to a hospital. This causes the infant to become seriously ill. Meanwhile, Oliveira resents the situation more and more, since he had not agreed to live with a baby. During a fight, Horacio hints that he could end the relationship. La Mega bursts into tears. Oliveira leaves the apartment, perhaps with the intention of visiting Pola, a mistress. He is not sure if he will return or not. Later, while wandering the streets aimlessly, the protagonist witnesses an old man being run over by a car. Another witness affirms that the victim is a writer who lives near the place. An ambulance arrives and takes the wounded man away. It starts to drizzle. Horacio continues in his melancholy musings. He is impressed by how the paramedics treated the accident victim in such a mechanical way. In an effort to take shelter from bad weather, he barricades himself in the entrance of a theater and decides to go in to see the piano concert announced at the venue by a certain Madame Bert Trepat. In the theater, Oliveira listens to Trepat's compositions, which seem poorly written and worse interpreted. The rest of the audience just walks out in the middle of the concert. Everything indicates that Horacio likes the woman, whose failure contrasts ironically with her proud demeanor. He offers to walk her home in the rain while she tells him about her problems with Valentine, her partner, who must be at home with one of her lovers. Upon arrival, Horacio offers to look for a hotel for the lady, and she slaps him, Oliveira leaves humiliated and cries. He returns to La Mega's apartment, where he runs into a suitor of hers, Gregorovius. Horacio thinks they slept while he was away, but in reality La Mega had rejected this character's courtships. Horacio sits down with the two of them to have a talk like the ones in the Serpent Club, but they are constantly interrupted by an elderly man who lives one floor above and continually bangs on the floor. At the height of the argument, 
Oliveira touches Rocamador and discovers that the baby is dead. After reflecting on the meaninglessness of death and considering the confusion that the event will cause, Oliveira, with his usual attitude, decides not to communicate the terrible news. However, given the insistence of the upstairs neighbor, he suggests that Mega go upstairs and confront the man. While she leaves to do this, Oliveira tells Gregorovius what happened with the infant. The two sit down to consider the legal implications. Gregorovius doesn't mention the matter either when La Mega returns. Then several friends from the Snake Club show up. Two of them, Ronald and Babs, arrive to break the news that another of the members, Guy Monod, tried to commit suicide. Then a third member of the group, Etienne, arrives to report that Monod will survive, despite being very ill. The group then embarks on another series of deep, philosophical discussions during which they quietly tell each other about the horrible thing that happened in that house. La Mega is excluded from the discussion, but she finally realizes that her son is dead when she tries to give him a dose of her medicine. She becomes hysterical, and the chaos Oliveira feared finally breaks loose. La Mega seeks consolation from Horacio, but he cannot or does not want to provide the required support, so he remains silent and chooses to leave. The baby's wake is held. All the members of the club are present, except Horacio, who has once again wandered aimlessly through the streets of Paris. When he finally returns to the apartment, several days have passed and La Mega has disappeared. The one who now lives there is Gregorovius. He insinuates that La Mega could have returned to her native Montevideo, but Horacio doubts that she has the means to pay for that trip. He feigns disinterest, but privately suspects that she may have committed suicide after the wake. Another possibility is that she went to Pola's house, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. While walking on the banks of the Seine River, Horacio runs into a homeless woman known to him and La Mega, whose previous meeting he does not remember very well. Since he has nowhere else to go, Horacio sits down and talks to the beggar for a while. His name, as he recalls, is Emmanuel. He agrees to the woman's request to buy wine and drink it together, and they both end up drunk under a bridge. Emmanuel tries to perform oral sex on Horacio, but the police unexpectedly drop by and arrest them. They are brought to the station along with two pederasts. On the trip, Oliveira continues to reflect on his search for unity and on his relationship with La Mega. The pedophiles, meanwhile, discuss a kaleidoscope. They note that, only against the right light, the pretty patterns within it are noticeable. The first part of the book ends with Oliveira's intuition that heaven is something that is not above the earth, but on the surface of it, but at some distance, to which one approaches in a similar way as children play to hopscotch. Second part, on the side of here. The action now moves to Argentina, where the story begins with a brief introduction about Manolo Traveler, a childhood friend of Horacio's who lives in Buenos Aires with his wife Talita. Traveler is described as a restless guy, whose marriage to Talita is stable. But Manolo has a bad feeling when Gacreptan, Horacio's old girlfriend, informs him that Horacio, whom he hasn't seen in years, is coming back to the country. Despite the bad feeling, he and Talita go to the dock to welcome Horacio, where he momentarily confuses his friend's wife with La Mega. However, Oliveira's mind clears when he goes to live with Gacreptan, with whom he occupies a hotel room across the street from Traveler and Talita's apartment. Oliveira is employed as a cloth salesman, but he is not doing very well. Traveler, who works in a circus with Talita, finds a job for her there. However, he has his doubts. Oliveira's presence disturbs him, but he cannot determine why. At first he thinks that perhaps it is his friend's flirtations with Talita, but he feels that there is something deeper. In addition, he does not doubt the fidelity of his wife. Unable to unravel the mystery and ask Horacio to leave them alone, Traveler feels increasingly anxious and helpless and can't even sleep. Meanwhile, Talita reminds Horacio more and more of La Mega. Hence, he sees himself in Traveler. He tries, therefore, to interfere in the intimate life of the couple, but he cannot. His frustration grows to the point that he begins to show signs of an impending mental breakdown. 
One hot afternoon, Oliveira spends hours trying to straighten some nails, although he still doesn't know what he's going to use them for. Very soon this action triggers an episode of madness and Horacio convinces Traveler and Talita to help him build a bridge between the windows of the buildings so that she can cross it. Once finished, Horacio asks Talita to cross the bridge and bring him nails and Yerba mate. Traveler is willing to agree to his friend's eccentricities, but Talita is scared and asks not to participate. He thinks it's some kind of test, finally he throws the grass and the nails at him, but he does not cross the bridge. Shortly after, the owner of the circus sells it to a businessman, a certain Suarez Melian, and acquires a psychiatric hospital. Traveler, Talita, and Horacio agree to work in this new place, despite the irony of the situation, or maybe because of it. Horacio jokes that the hospital patients wouldn't be crazier and the three of them anyway. Talita becomes the floor pharmacist, while Horacio and Traveler work as assistants or night guards. The place is creepy and dark, especially in the long hours before dawn. Often the three take refuge in the warm atmosphere of the pharmacy, where they drink and talk. Remarino, an employee of the clinic, shows Traveler and Oliveira a morgue in the basement, where the bodies of deceased patients are stored and where beer can be kept cold. One night Horacio is smoking in his room on the second level, when he sees Toledo crossing the moonlit garden downstairs, possibly going to her room to sleep. Then he thinks he sees La Mega in the same place playing hopscotch. But when she sees him, he realizes that it is Talita who is playing. A kind of guilt begins to take hold of Oliveira, who soon comes to conceive the idea that someone wants to kill him while he is on guard duty. Probably Traveler. That same night, while Oliveira is on the second floor considering the symbolic implications of the elevator in that hospital, Talita approaches him and the two begin to talk about different topics, including La Mega, when the elevator starts and rises from the basement with a patient inside. After sending the man back to his room, Horacio and Talita decide to go down to see if everything is in order in the morgue. Already in the basement, next to the corpses, Horacio begins to speak to Talita as if she were La Mega. In a moment of desperation, he tries to kiss her, but is rebuffed. Back in her room, Talita tells Traveler what happened. Meanwhile, Oliveira returns to his own room and is now convinced that Traveler wants to kill him. In the dark he begins to build a kind of barricade made up of basins full of water on the ground, as well as strings tied to heavy objects, which in turn are tied to the doorknob. Oliveira sits in the dark across the room, near the window, waiting for Traveler. The hours pass slowly. Traveler finally arrives and tries to get inside. The chaos and noise drive Dr. Ovigero and the patients to go out to the garden, from where they see Horacio at the window, perhaps with the intention of jumping. Traveler tries to convince Horacio not to do it, but ends up getting along with his friend and interceding with the rest of the staff so that they leave him alone, locked in his room. At the end of the chapter, Horacio waves to his two friends who are watching him from the patio, grateful that they have made the others go away, and the narration implies that he throws himself out the window. Part 3, From Other Sides Composed of the expendable chapters, this part is made up of additional materials, such as newspaper clippings, book quotes and others, which help to understand different passages of the novel and where Oliveira's personality and inner motivations are described in a deeper way. It is not necessary to understand the plot, but it is necessary to solve certain enigmas that arise throughout the first two parts. For example, reading this section the reader comes to know that the story continues after Horacio jumps out of the window, is admitted to the hospital, sedated by Ovigero and cared for by his loved ones. It would also seem that the boss fires the three friends from the clinic as a result of the whole episode. In this part it is also known how it was that the Mega and Emmanuel, the beggar, met, and much more is known about the mysterious Morelli. Through his writings, some of the reasons behind Cortezer's construction of the novel are appreciated, such as the desire to write a work in which the reader is an accomplice who conspires with the writer. It is revealed in turn that Morelli was the writer run over in the first part of the novel, Horacio and Etienne visit him at the hospital, and he asks them to go to his apartment and organize his notes. The Serpent Club meets that night at Morelli's house, the writer about whom they have argued so much, it is the last time, 
after the death of La Mega's son and the wake, that distances them from Horacio, who was one of the most important characters in history. Julio Cortezer originally intended to title the novel Mandala, a name that alludes to the circular symbols of Hinduism and Buddhism that represent the internal, microcosm, and external, macrocosm, universes, and are used in meditation to achieve unity with being, precisely the search for Horacio Oliveira, the novel's protagonist. However, it sounded pretentious to the author to title it that way, so he finally decided to call it Hopscotch, in reference to the children's game. The objective of this game is to reach the sky, that is, the ninth frame, by means of jumping on one foot. In this way, the hopscotch sky becomes the symbol of Oliveira's self-imposed chimera of always looking for something he doesn't know what it is. In its background and in its form, hopscotch vindicates the importance of the reader and, to a certain extent, pushes him to an activity and a leading role previously denied by the classic novel, in which the important thing was to guide him through the linearity of the story. Until the end. In Hopscotch, on the other hand, the plot is conceived as nothing more than a stage in which the characters unfold in a free and deep vitality that the author grants them and for which he himself says he is not responsible. Hopscotch raises the denial of everyday life and the opening to new realities where the most absurd situations are taken to their most tragic consequences with total lightness, even with a sense of humor. These paths that are proposed constitute a new way of reaching Hopscotch heaven. Many critics refer to this work as an anti-novel, due to its innovative character, since it breaks with all the pre-established canons at the time of its first publication. However, Cortezer was not totally in agreement with this classification, since said term seemed to him a slightly poisonous attempt to destroy the novel as a genre, as he stated in an interview. For this reason he preferred to call it a counter-novel, since with Hopscotch he sought to see the contact between the novel and the reader in a different way, to encourage the latter to modify his passive attitude towards the novel. To turn him into an active and critical part of this and thus arouse a kind of controversy between an author and a reader. Relevant Characters, Horacio Oliveira He is the protagonist of the story. Of Argentine origin, he is between 40 and 45 years old. It is characterized by knowing a number of topics. He went to Paris to study, but he doesn't. He works helping to organize correspondence. He has a brother, a lawyer, who lives in Rosario, Argentina. He is in a constant search, but according to Osip Gregorovius, another character in the novel, you have the feeling that you already have what you are looking for in your pocket. The magician, Lucia. She is the protagonist of the story. Born in Uruguay, she traveled to Paris with her son Rocamador. She is characterized by being distracted and by not having the knowledge of her classmates and friends, a situation that sometimes makes her feel inferior, it is so violet to be ignorant. However, his naivety and tenderness more than once are envied by the members of the Snake Club. What Oliveira de la Mega envies most is her way of seeing things, she swims in the river, while he looks at it from afar. I don't know how to express myself, La Mega said, wiping the spoon with a not-so-clean cloth. Maybe others could explain it better, but I've always been the same, it's much easier to talk about sad things than happy ones. Rocamador. It's a baby, son of the magician. His real name is the same as his father, Francisco. He is cared for by a nanny named Madame Irene, but eventually La Mega takes him to live with her. In the course of the story, the baby gets sick and dies in the apartment that La Mega and Horacio shared, the same night that Guy Mano tries to commit suicide. The death of the child is a fundamental fact in the novel. Etienne. He is a painter and one of Oliveira's best friends during his stay in Paris. Character inspired by a friend that Cortezer met in 1955 together with Edith Aaron, La Mega the Franco-Argentine artist Sergio de Castro. Ronald. He is an American jazz and bebop pianist who lives in Paris. He is Babs's boyfriend. Babes. She is an American potter, girlfriend of Ronald and lives in Paris. Guy Monod. He is Etienne's friend. He appears in the presentation of all the members of the club and at the end of Oliveira's time in Paris he tries to commit suicide, but it has no significance in the plot of the novel. Morelli. 
He is an accomplished novelist, identified by some as Julio Cortezer's alter ego, whom the club members study and admire. He is represented in the first chapters, on the side of there, as an old man who is run over and whom Oliveira helps. In the expendable chapters, third part, the identity of the character is clarified and Oliveira and Etienne go to visit him at the hospital. Cortezer puts his idea of making literature into Morelli's words, which is why he speaks of making a clean literature, without many decorations. Ossip Gregorovius. He is in love with La Mega, which is why he is not to Oliveira's liking. He is an intellectual, just like all the members of the Snake Club. His past history is not well known, but he claims three different mothers. He is from Romania. Perico Romero. Spanish, lover of literature. Pola. Young French woman, lover of Oliveira. In order for Oliveira to leave her, La Mega makes a voodoo day with a doll that represents her and curses her so that she will get breast cancer. Pola effectively acquires this ailment, which generates a great feeling of guilt in La Mega. Wong. Of Chinese origin, he is initially described in Chapter 14. He carries a briefcase full of books, and in his wallet, photos related to a mythical execution in Beijing, from 1905. Traveler. He is a youth friend of Horacio Oliveira. Live in Argentina. He is Talita's husband. Oliveira sees himself in it. Talita. Traveler's wife. Oliveira sees La Mega in her. Cacreptan. Horacio Oliveira's girlfriend. Of Argentine origin, she is excessively passive, the complete opposite of La Mega. During the second part, Oliveira returns to Argentina and temporarily stays with her.